a tangled web we must unwind today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today I'm talking about the True SDX, a design by DL2MAN and running some sweet software by PE1NNZ. Let's get started. The True SDX is a quite nice sized portable QRP radio. It advertises five bands of operation and QRP power output, 20 meters and lower down to 80 meters. And there's rumors that will be software updates that will get all the higher bands up to 10 meters at play eventually. And the design of this radio would allow that to happen given a firmware update or something along those lines. This radio has made the rounds online. There's a lot of people talking about it. There are a lot of people getting in on group buys. I was one of them. About two months ago, maybe even earlier than that, fairly early, I picked up a group buy from Row Waves. Row Waves is a website that is kitting out and reselling them at retail prices or for profit, if you will. This is important. We'll get to it in a second. At the time this video has been made, the Row Waves kit has not been built by DL2MAN, or it's been built, but it doesn't really have his seal of approval yet. And that's gonna be important for things that we'll talk about um, as we move along. So why does this matter? Group buys, who's making which radio, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is a Creative Commons kit. The design of this radio is under Creative Commons license, meaning anyone can go buy parts for this, kit them up, resell them for profit, and they don't have to pay DL2MAN or PE1NZ for the pleasure to do so. Now, DL2MAN has a nice YouTube page where he goes through and talks a ton about his True SDX radio and also builds the kits produced by third parties. In a rush to try and get this radio in the hands of as many people possible, a uh, row wave went out and made these kits. They're on, I think, wave six, meaning there are six group buys that have been closed and are either have been shipped like mine and are in my hot little hands, or they are going out eventually in the future. The first two group by waves, one and two, mine was part of two, did not come with a bootloader flashed on the microcontroller. Uh, this has been remedied with the later group builds. This is just an FYI, if you are kind of new to the world of flashing bootloaders and firmwares, I would suggest you go with whichever company produces a kit or develop a completed radio that has the bootloader already in it for some of the issues I've gone through getting to this point today. Some of you might be thinking to yourself, Josh, you are really, <laughs> you're really belaboring the opening of this, what the heck is going on? Uh, well, I have a, a kind of a dead on arrival kit and I will try and explain that in as fast as I can. Uh, stick with me though, because some of you may experience this. I don't know if this is systemic, it just happened to me and I'm telling you about it. My Row Waves kit arrived with all the surface mount parts already installed on the radio. One of them being the microcontroller that basically runs the firmware, the software brains, if you will, of the radio. After some troubleshooting with the folks at Row Waves, it was determined that my microcontroller was dead. So they sent me a new logic board. Uh, the bad news with that is I had already completed the full build of the radio. The build was complete. And so I had to just desolder some parts and migrate them over to this new logic board. So far, Row Wave support has been good. They have been proactive, responding to my emails very quickly. So I have to give them points for that. In parallel, DL2MAN runs a web forum where people talk about their build process and a lot of troubleshooting that people are going for or going through with these radios. And it was discovered that the Row Waves kit, and I, I believe this is all of them, again, at the time of recording, which is April 11th, 2022, that there is an efficiency problem with the radio. Meaning the advertised QRP five watts output is not achievable right now with the Row Waves kit. And um, the link will be in the description. You can go check out the forum. They may be further along than I have checked in the last couple of days. Just keep in mind that there is potentially a bug in the build with the Row Waves kit. Um, 
hang on, don't anybody run away yet. There are other options that we'll talk about here shortly. I just wanted to give an FYI. Yeah, it looks like they're still debugging this and they've literally got the thermal cameras out there. You can see that right there, looking at one of the wrapped up toroids. Um, okay, Let, let's, let's see if we can move forward a little bit here. So now I'll tell you the, the upside of all this. The kit is $130. You can buy one of these kits through a distributor on AliExpress. So far, the true SDX that you can get off of AliExpress doesn't experience the efficiency problems, at least that's my understanding. Uh, you can also buy a completed true SDX from the same AliExpress site. I will post a link in the description so you can check it out. So all that precursor bit there in the beginning is for people who bought the Rowaves kits and you may be wondering what the heck is even going on. Hopefully I'm giving you the right information and then for those of you that are thinking about the Rowaves kit, that's just some information to digest. At this point, I'd probably tell you to get the um, AliExpress kit. You're gonna be waiting a little bit longer for that. I hope they fix the Rowaves kits and everybody who bought them as part of group buys um, is able to make progress. And I'll continue along with it because I'm in the same boat with you. I bought the Rowaves kit, um, but I also bought the AliExpress one to talk about whenever that shows up from China. Today's video though, we're gonna be doing the actual assembly of the logic board, the top board, and the RF board that goes underneath. This is kind of a sandwich kit. You build the two pieces, they go together, and then the 3D printed case kind of shims the two boards and spaces them appropriately. So you end up with a really nice package. You can look forward to a second video where I will explain the bootloader flashing as well as the firmware flashing because I've done it so many times now with three or four different types of flashing devices. Some that I picked up on Amazon, some that I repurposed an Arduino for. Good news is, all these flashing mechanisms works really well. I was able to get a little crazy with the experimentation that I went through. So do look forward to that. I was literally harvesting microcontrollers off of Arduino micros to, or Arduino minis to make this work. Hat tip to Loyal, um, admin extraordinaire there on the Discord. Anyway, that'll be a lot of fun, but that's not the topic of today. So if you have not already, subscribe, and then you can follow me along as we go through this journey with the true SDX. Now, I will say I am still optimistic about getting a working copy of this radio because, if I didn't mention it up front, this isn't just a CW radio. This is also single sideband. In fact, it also does AM and FM modulation. So you get single sideband, upper and lower sideband, Morse code, of course, and AM and FM capability. There is an internal speaker as well as an internal microphone and a PTT button. So this could be like a total last ditch bug radio, your, your burr radio, not a backup gun, a burr, a backup radio. Uh, yeah, you could put this in your, your EMP pouch and kind of make this your, your last stand radio. Assuming you get one that gets the full efficiency of five watts out and is good at its power draw. Anyway, that is a topic for a future video, assuming I get a working version of this. So do stick with me. I am going to walk you through the assembly. This is probably going to be a long video. For those of you that have the Rowaves kit, I found the assembly actually very straightforward. It is not instructed though. You don't actually get a list of instructions that say, now put the resistor in blah, 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 because there really isn't any resistors that you have to put into place. This is largely an assembly radio, meaning headphone jacks, potentiometers, you have to put in three MOSFETs and 13 toroids that you must uh, wind yourself. So this is truly more on the assembly side, but there's some gotchas in there. So hopefully this is some fun. Let's go to the tabletop and build up this radio. What they're calling it here is more of an assembly kit than what you would do with a more traditional kit like this Cricut, where you're going in and you're actually soldering the resistors in place. That's not what you do with the true SDX. It's more of an assembly build because to be able to make it as small as it is, they had to go with surface mounts on a lot of these. So generally your job in building this kit is going to be the assembly of different relays, literally soldering them to the board, the mount points for the antennas, headphone jack speakers. So assembling the radio, but the components, the circuitry itself, has been done for you by the factory. There are some quirks in here. There is a couple of surface mount connections you need to make, but I wouldn't call them that difficult. It's not. Sometimes if you're like me, banging your head against the wall, trying to figure out what the heck is going on with your kit radio, because you are not an electrical engineer, but a software engineer, and you just wanna know why. 
Well, maybe you want to check out the sponsor this month, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning website for focused absorption of information. And this is no exception. The basic fundamentals of electricity and DC circuit analysis. And this is put out by Graham Von Brunt, professional electrical engineer. Oftentimes when I'm on YouTube, you get to a point where you want to know the deeper, the deeper magic, the deeper lore. And you weren't there when it was written, so you've got to go and search through many different videos. And wouldn't it be nice if we could just coalesce them into one location for that topic that you just really want to focus and finish and deep dive on. I do recommend it because I find that sometimes I really want to just get the whole backstory and get a foundation to build off of not just for DC electronics or radio or soldering, but video making, which is what I'm doing right now. And I have found the classes on Skillshare very helpful. Thanks again to Skillshare for the support. The first 1,000 people that take the custom link in the description or use my code Ham Radio Crash Course will get one month of Skillshare free. So get started. All right, here are parts unboxed from the box from Moro Waves. And again, there's the QR code if you wanna find um, the website link will be in the description too. This kit is more put together than the DL2 man video, which you may watch. This is the logic board, the PCB logic board. In his video, this IC wasn't installed and you had to go in and source that and install it. Uh, Row Waves has that covered. The RF board is where you install three transistors, the relays, and then all the, <laughs> all the toroids which have to be wound by you. And there are two types of toroids. They come in the little baggies, all your little components go onto the logic board, which we'll work with right now so we can kind of get that out of the way. Note in shipping, it looks like my speaker got cracked, uh, not cracked, but pushed in there. So that might be a problem that I'll have to deal with in the future, but whatever. There are screws for mounting the 3D, mounting your radio into the 3D printed case, which again, we'll get into as we get going. I'm, I'm pretty excited with this kit. The row wave so far seems to have much of the parts uh, provided that we need. So this should be an easy assembly video. And yes, I call it assembly because that's really what we're doing here today is we're assembling most of this. Again, you got to build some stuff, but this is way this would have been a much bigger radio if this was not done with surface mounts you can see this just the sheer val the volume of parts that have to be installed and you can see that here look at look at all the surface mounts so many surface mounts so i'm pretty happy that this kit exists in this capacity all right so first thing to start with here is this pin header that's at an angle a right angle so much like i i normally do i kind of just hold it into place because it will fall let me get some solder here on our, our lead, get it on our iron here. We're gonna tack it into place. And this does need to be semi-flush, so it needs to come out, needs to come out parallel with the board. So make sure you're paying attention to that when you're kind of getting it soldered. I'm running my iron at 650 degrees. This is uh, likely 6040 solder for those of you that ask. And check for straightness. See it? Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, most of the uh, parts, the actual things that you will interface, are attached on the back side, like these mic jacks, key jacks, all that stuff. So they kind of go in sit flush like that like a so a lot of these aren't going to hold into place so we will come back to them let's do the first one here i i, I kind of tilt my pcb vice to be a little bit more towards me and then i'll come in i'll put my finger over the top of it and then just hit it with the solder we're kind of tacking it into place that's the primary purpose of this so that it sits flush you really want this to be flush on the board and then go around and just hit all the other spots this is often the last thing you do, but in this kit, it makes sense to kind of just get the RF or the logic board done and then get it out of the way. I am using the stock tip on the Hako. There's no reason to go to the small one. So here's another one. I'm gonna do this a bit off to the side. Yeah, 
You know, I was thinking the other day, a lot of you, oh, that was off the shot, but anyway, you can see most of it right there. A lot of you who are uh, fountain pen enthusiasts, I think you might really like soldering. There is uh, a lot of tip control, particularly if you use the stock Hako tip. That always reminds me of uh, f using a fountain pen. Remember, I'm, I'm tacking it. That's the, the point here. I'm, vert I'm holding it vertically. I'm going to go to the first little tip there, throw some solder on it just to get it to sit, hold it into place, then bring it down and it, it locks it for me so I can do the rest of them. And then we'll come back to that one if I need to update. In fact, I need to go back and clean this one up a little bit. And by clean up, normally that means adding solder or reflowing the solder a little bit so that it gets a bit of a better uh, coating. So come back on this guy, a bit more, good to go. This guy could use a bit more too, a little touch, all done. All right, clicky buttons. Clicky buttons are awesome for doing through hole because they stick, they just sit there. So you kind of push them into place. They've got little feet that kind of hold on. They're angled a bit. You can see that there, which makes it really easy for installation. So now we can just rotate over and knock them into place with some solder. One thing that we're going to hit next is the microphone. That has a little bit of doing to it, but it makes a lot of sense when you look at it. And it was covered very well in the video. As always, I, I would recommend you do go look at the video from the creator of this kit. It is uh, nicely done and his YouTube channel definitely deserves the views because he goes into some use cases of how we're going to run this radio. A couple of people have submitted videos to him using it in a contest and uh, it, it's a lot of fun. There's also some USB cat control features because this does have a micro USB port. So look forward to potentially even audio over USB in the future with this which would, I think, just make this the, the... If we can get audio over USB, this radio is just gonna be stellar. I'm, I'm so down for having a super tiny radio uh, to be able to put in a kit, a very small kit that can go with you anywhere. And if you've got computing capability, you know, there you go. Pretty, pretty awesome. I'm really excited about that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The last thing we gotta do on this board is the microphone. And let me show you how that's done. The microphone is a tiny, tiny boy. Let me grab my tweezers. The microphone fits right here in these two spots here. Let me make sure I'm getting as close as I can. So the ground plane of a PCB is the, is the green part, basically, that, that none of the traces are going through, right? The ground plane connects on this hole, so that's going to be your negative hole. And the way you test this is you take your multimeter and you touch the probe to the housing and then each one of the pins. Where you have the continuity is where your negative pole is gonna be for the microphone. Okay, got our friendly neighborhood Harbor Freight uh, multimeter here. Never leave home without it, because they're cheap. And we're just gonna kinda go like that. And like that. It's not actually easy to do this. <laughs> He gads. I had to put it on the table so I could get it better. It's this guy. So this is the negative. All right, the microphone holes are not very, uh, the microphone holes are very wide and the microphone itself's legs are not splur spread enough here to get in there. So we're gonna do a little tabletop surgery to make this fit. Um, same deal, we're gonna tack it into place. I centered the microphone a little bit better there. Got it. We'll go back over the first one. A little bit. Done. All right, mic is in place. All right, last couple of things to do here is we need to put the OLED in place, the OLED screen. The instructions for what to do to modify the OLED, because again, it's going to flop right over the top of this once we're all done with the, with the modifications. Um, we've got to follow these directly, and it says remove C3 and C4 from the OLED right here. Uh, these guys right here. C3, sorry, these guys right here, C3, C4. And then top of U2 to bottom of C6. So U2 is somewhere around here and C6 is right there, the bottom of C6. At least I'm assuming that's the bottom. Um, make sure you take your time. I'll make sure I'm doing this right before I start taking things off. But let's take the solder, uh, these two capacitors off C3, C4. Right, C3, C4, yeah, okay. So I'm going to leave the foam on here because I don't want to mess with the, the, the pads. I'm going to clean my iron really well and I'm going to come in 
and I'm going to heat the pads. And there, that's C3 is off. And now C4, just riding back and forth. And there's C4, done. So here's one of the more fidgety parts of this. So we need to connect a wire from top of U2, which is right there, to the bottom of C6, right? Top of U2 to bottom of C6. So we're going to route a wire across and over. Here's gonna be our wire. So we're gonna start right there, and it's gonna come around like that and connect. So I'll take a little snip here. Okay, I had a lot of coffee this morning. Okay. All right, the hack from the video, which is uh, pretty good, is basically taking these little cutout pin headers, the breakaway type, put them into the holes, and then take your OLED screen, line it up, and those pin headers will hold the screen in place while you do the soldering, which I think is ingenious. Let's, uh, let's do a couple attacks here on the bottom one and the one on the right. Okay, that should allow us now when we when we hold this guy up, well, we should be pretty straight. So we want the screen to be pretty flush, parallel with the PCB, which it, it looks like it is. So now we can do our, our solder in place here. So I'll hold the board over like that. Put one leg in, just one. If we need to adjust it, just soften up the pad again. Could be better. Now we'll finish it. All right, an interesting bit, because this is gonna be sandwiched on top of the other PCB, the RF PCB, we now need to put in the pin header between the two. Normally you would install pin headers, you know, with the long side out so that when you plug it into something, uh, not the case here though. We want to install the long side on the PCB board with the little leg sticking out that's going to make the tolerance between the two boards really, really small. So let's line it up so it's perfectly vertical and we'll, we'll check it as we go here. Good. And now we just go around and do the rest of them. All right, last component is the PCB rotary encoder or the rotary encoder installed on the PCB. It goes right in, it can only go in one way. I'm gonna let the PCB kind of push up against it and I'm gonna solder one leg and then we're gonna check the fit. Yep, that's about as flush as it's gonna get. All right, now we finish up the rest of the solders. Logic board is done. Your I.O. board is, is all complete now. That's it right there. Uh, now we have to move over to the RF board, which is where all those toroids lie. So whew, here we go, let's pull him out. All right, so where this kit differs, the Rowaves kit from the DL2MAN video, is that the relays used in the Rowaves kit is the through hole type of relays. So you just push them through the board, through the holes. Uh, if you wanna go in there and, and fold the legs over and then come back and hit them with solder, you can do that so it holds them in place. But you just take them, they only go in one way and you just do that for all of them until you've got them placed. And then you can hit them with the, uh, the solder and that would be it. And this is kind of the first step for the RF board. I'll tell you what, this, uh, this kit does not give a lot of instruction and I don't know that it needs to necessarily, the parts that you do need instruction for, it, it talks about like the um, 
like the OLED and all that stuff, like that's that's there, that's good, it tells you what to do. But a lot of this stuff is fairly clearly marked on the PCB. You know, oh, that's where the relays go. The pins are the same. So you, you don't have any problem to work with. Let's bring back my, my vise here. All right, relays are installed. So now we just need to hit them with that solder. Wow, we did it. All right, so now, now unfortunately the next step is we're gonna have to start winding some toroids and uh, we can go ahead and put these Let's put our, our these MOSFETs, I believe. Let's do those now so we're just, they're done and out of the way. You can see the PCB's already got them lined up. The holes are right there. All right, I put this off long enough. We've got 10 toroids here and then three more. Now, the there are schematics online that you can look at, uh, but there's also this like web-based HTML PCB tool that uh, I'll link in the description and you can get it off of uh, D2MAN's website as well. That when you click on the PCB area, it'll tell you what part goes where and how many windings. Most of the red toroids are very straightforward. It'll just say T and then the number of turns. These guys, two of them in particular, have a primary and secondary winding. So it does come with some magnet wire. Unsure if this is enameled or not, I'm gonna assume that it is. It's a pretty decent amount of wire, so we should be able to do all these. So you just start, <laughs> you just start winding. And as always, you know, the way to remember how this goes is when you make your first pass through the toroid, that's your, that's one. And the first ones are gonna be L11 and L12. These are both 10 turn toroids. So we'll, we'll start with the 10. So I just kind of go down the long length. There's no reason to start cutting anything arbitrarily. So just start out at a long length here and we're gonna go through 10 times. So this is one. And 10. So I actually went too long on that one. You can see I, I pulled too much wire out on that one, so that's not necessarily good, but I've got backup magnet wire for those of you that um, you don't have a lot of magnet wire, and this is what you got, what came with the kit. Just keep that in mind that you could cut too much. In this case, yeah, that's that's a bit too much. So I'm gonna snip the ends off that I don't need. I'm gonna save that for the one pass through. Stretch out the windings, make them even across your toroid, and then just snip the, snip the leads off. You can make them long, it's fine for what I'm about to show you, um, how DL2MAN recommends it. Now, you're supposed to strip off the, um, the enamel, and, and there's a couple of ways to do it. You can just use a blade like this and just pull the toroid. Actually, you usually go like that. There you go. There's other methods. I also like using a lighter like this. Heat the enamel up and then use a bit of steel wool to just pull it off. That makes it really clean. So I'm gonna show you right now with overlays. The overlays is the HTML website. You'll click on the component that you're curious about. These are gonna be L's, so L, L11, L12s. Those are gonna be your toroids. You're gonna look at the first digit on most of them and it'll have it'll be prepended with a T. That's the number of turns you need. And then you're gonna go in here and evenly space them out. You can do that after you wind it. Pull relatively tight as you go, but there is actually a breaking point on this wire, so don't pull too tight because then you actually will just end up breaking it. Once you have those done, go ahead and strip off the enamel and then I'll show you the next bit. Double checking everything. Make sure you're looking at that uh, diagram, that schematics really well. We've got L11 and L32. These are both 10 turn uh, toroids. So they're simple at that point, once you've got the 10 turns through them, you put them through the holes like that. Now D2, sorry, DL2MAN, he takes them, holds them, and then turns the PCB. I've, I've seen that done before. Um, you can go ahead and do that if you'd like to, makes sense. You do need to clear off the enamel though before you do this. It's not gonna work without that. And what was the other one? D, uh, L32. 
Yeah, that does make things a little bit nice. So when you click on the, the part, when you've got multiples, in this case, you've got two 10 turn toroids here. Uh, it does make it kind of easy to use that, that website to be able to, to, to look at which ones are it. So then you just flip them around. You've got your enamel stripped off the wires there, so you're ready to solder. So then when you go to solder it, you just hit up those two tabs pretty easy. I'll show that when we get there. But for right now, let's wrap the rest of these toroids and then we'll talk about these other guys that are right here. For the sake of sanity, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap these and hit the old time-lapse button. That's one, two, All right, so we're gonna do one of the FTT 3743s right now. This one takes 22 turns. This is gonna be the most turns of any of the toroids in this kit. Okay, so 22 turns is basically double what we've been doing. So take, I don't know, about that much. It's probably more than enough. That's probably way too much actually. But you gotta make these tight. So you save a lot of time just by um, starting out. Oh, and then also take the kinks out. That's something else I'll, I'll, I'll point out. Let me show you how to do that right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, before you get started, take the wire and just feed it through your hands like that, your fingers, until you get it kind of the kinks out. I'm gonna wind this guy and then I'll, I'll, I'll show you the, the rest. This is not that special, it's just the right, this different toroid material. All right, a 20 turn toroid, pretty tightly, tightly wrapped to be able to hit those 22 turns. And while you're going, you know, it's not about the super hard pulling, it's more about consistency and how you pull the wire through. I feel like I start out and kind of feed and pull down, applying pressure while still holding the other wire to start. That, that's a big, major importance. So, okay, let's get, the, let's get the enamel off here. All right, all the toroids have been wound. Whew. Let's talk about these ones, okay? The ones on two on the left side here. They are each seven wraps, okay? Seven wraps on the toroid. But there are two holes on each side of the toroid, which you can see there and there and there and there. The toroid goes on the diagonal line of the PCB, which is gonna be this guy and the guy right there. And then you take one single wire and go through the, the toroid to the hole on the other side. All I did for that was take a bit of the magnet wire take a bit of the magnet wire and strip off a little bit, you know, half an inch, an inch on each side. So you got maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch in the middle. And that's the part that goes through the toroid there. Seemed to work just fine. Well, we'll see when we get it all uh, soldered up here and turned on. Anyway, time to put the heat down. I did already solder those because I was, I was kind of curious how they were all going to go in. So I figured it'd be best if I just got them all placed and got done with it. There we go. Now I did uh, a bit of a job on all the enamel wire. You really got to get in there and, and knock it out. Uh, you really take your time with doing that because uh, <laughs> I have definitely had kits before where the enamel wasn't completely stripped off, and they they just didn't they just didn't work out. Let me just put it that way. I I spent a lot of time uh, messing with them after having them already done and then I ended up having once you start cutting your wires here on your toroids then <laughs> you're there's not much to work with uh, if you're trying to take off the enamel after the fact so just keep that in mind we've got a little bit of that going on right now so I'm trying to clean up some of the leftover leavings of enamel as I'm going through this you'll see them smoke up a bit and really go in there and uh, use your iron to scrape up and down on the toroid wires poking through. If there's just even a little bit of enamel left, that'll sometimes help knock it all off. Okay. This one's got a bit of enamel left on there. Try and cook it off a bit here too. Just go in there and scrape a little bit with your iron tip. And that should take care of it. All right, uh, aside from the pin header and the antenna connection, I think we're done here. So I'll just do a little cleanup of the, the leads. 
you know, something to keep in mind is that some of this stuff is a bit non-standard. This radio has an SMA antenna connection and the power connector is uh, not at all what I would expect. It is a uh, much smaller diameter power connector. Now that might be to save space. I don't know that that's true. It could be cost. The designer of this, the designers of this kit really wanted to make something that was inexpensive and easily purchasable for group buys which if you made it this far and you're interested in this radio, this is a great group buy radio. In fact, there's a couple of websites that are offering group buys. So if you're interested in setting up your own group buy or getting something going in that front, uh, take the link in the description to DL2MAN's site where he talks about group buys. All right, so sandwichy time, getting ready to, to do that PCB sandwich. The pin headers go on this side of the PCB to be sandwiched into the logic board, which goes right on top there. So let's, let's solder this guy into place, same kind of concept. You know what I do? I'll pin one end, clean your tip for at least for that first one, very important. Little spot weld, check it, looks good. Then come in on the other side, just start working your way across. Okay, a couple of ones could probably use a bit of a drag there. I think we're pretty much done. We got one more thing we gotta do, the antenna connection, which is right here. The antenna connection is three sides and two sides to it. So just go in. Here's your three-sided tab. Is that the three side? Yep, there's the three side just like that. And you flip it over, there's the two side. So let's do that first. We'll do the two side. Ah, oh, come on. It got that hot? Well, that's not good. Okay, let's give that a second to cool. Jeez, that connector got rocket hot, I guess. Wow, all right. Not so bad, but uh, definitely assembly is probably the right word for it, but it, it does go down the rabbit hole a bit of a kit. So let's take a look at what we got now. We've got our, our parts here. They can be sandwiched together. Wow, that connector's still warm, Jesus. Can they be sandwiched together? Jeez. Wow, that was... We'll get to the speaker in a second. Don't worry. And I'm realizing what that wire was for. That wire was for the speaker. So how are you supposed to wire the... That was a speaker wire. Oh well, we'll sort it out. So that's gonna look something like that. Ooh, buddy! There's a little spot there for the speaker to sit in. My speaker did get a little beat up in shipping, but it should be okay. And if you notice, there's two holes there. I think it slides in like this. Yep, so it gaps it a little bit. Let me push it in. So it sits like that. And we are meant to strip these wires. <laughs> this one's gonna be a little extra long. Oh well. All right, the best way to do this is let's, let's solder the wires on so we got them connected. So I'm gonna just come in here while it's sitting. Get it hot. Okay, we have adhesion. Oh, shit. Don't do that. There's magnets. Magnet, it's a magnet. Mine the 3D printing stuff. This is a little too long. I really hate uh, soldering speakers, by the way. I don't know if uh, you know this about me. Not a fan, never a fan. All right, uh, so I've snipped the wires. <laughs> I have coaxed them into the holes at the right length. They're not placed. I'm gonna hit them with some solder really fast. And yeah, the, the heat shrink's gonna get in the way of this. Yeah. All right, the side pieces. Literally, you can't screw it up. There's a USB on one side. If you installed the parts correctly and you sandwiched it correctly, and there's a uh, 
your jack right there. That must be, yep, it's gotta be for that guy. So then this slides in like that. So remember the pin headers we installed? You could cut that if you wanted to, cut that hole out with a hobby knife, but I don't, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna skip that part. Ah, these are gapped. Oh, okay, we gotta start with these guys then. All right, so here you go. That, Nope, oh, hobby knife time. Get your hobby knife. Don't don't risk this. Let's do the back. Where's the power plug? This power plug is so tiny. Why? Why this power plug is so tiny? I ugh, I don't think I have a uh, the right size lead for that. I'm, in fact, I know I don't. So I'm gonna have to figure something out there. Okay, let's get our side plates. Side plates go right there. Bingo, bango, look at that, okay. This guy goes like that. that. Yeah, now, the kit and, and the work done here by DL2MAN and PE1NNZ, really nicely done. However, and this isn't their fault, uh, wherever you buy your kit from, sometimes it will be lacking in hardware and I think I'm missing some parts. I'm missing uh, some screws here, but I'll take what I can get, let's get it Let's get this, uh, at least the faceplate screwed together. All right, uh, we're, we're out of screws, or we have two more, sorry. We got two more, but uh, we need more than that to close this up fully. However, the tool will get us going, at least to the point that we can, we can test this radio out. I realize in assembling this, I have committed one of the cardinal sins of, of, of building things in that you don't, <laughs> You don't assemble the kit until you plug it in and do the troubleshooting that it works and all that good stuff. Uh, I don't have the right power connector for the back here, but it will power off of USB. At least that is my understanding. So, damn it. Bit of a spoiler uh, warning here. The images that you've seen of the completed true SDX are actually the, the completed radio. I did fix it and get it running. So you can look forward to a part two where we talk all about this <laughs> interesting radio. Well, I hope I was able to explain a little bit about what's going on with the Rowwaves kit. And for those of you that have all the other kits, hopefully this assembly video helps you out because the instructions and the how to's literally come from DL2 MAN. So they should be the same for all the kits. Again, Creative Commons, they should be pretty close. Look forward to a part two video where we go through the diagnosing process of the bootloader issue, the firmware install, and then hopefully get to play around with a working radio. Until then, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you have not. And until I talk to you again, 73.